Hello and welcome along and welcome back to Hope Belleron. We are heading down to the river with our tanker on the back uh, because uh, we need to get some more water for our tomatoes. Uh, the greenhouses have run out and in order to keep the tomato production going, we need to get that refilled. Uh, they're fairly water hungry, the tomatoes, so we want to keep them going. Might take a couple of journeys this, or we might do uh, a couple over the next few days just to get this top top. I want to see how much they use in a day. Uh, but this holds 6,000 litres of water, I think, so we should be okay for this. So the best place I found to grab water on this map is to come over here. And then we want to just back ourselves down here very carefully down to the water's edge. And stop there. Right. Uh, maybe not quite. Maybe a little bit further. It's quite deep you have to go. There we go. So, refill this. And yet, the most we can take in here with our weight limit is actually 4,000 litres. So, it's not quite as much as we'd hoped. But we do have the weight limit running on here for a little more realism. Does mean that this tanker can take the full 6,000 litres. But, uh, yeah, not with how we've got this set up on here. So, let's get this back up to our farm and get this emptied out into the greenhouse and see where that leaves us up there now with this taking 4,000 liters of water i wonder if it's the same for the milk uh, around here and whether we'll be able to get uh, the 4,000 liters of milk in here or whether it will take the full six we are getting fairly close to that amount so let's empty that out and get our tomatoes going again. That's fantastic news. So 399 and immediately going. Now, if we have a look in here and have a look at our Holstein cows, uh, we are up to 3,328 litres of milk. So we could be uh, ready for a full tank of milk later today, which would be good. Um, and I'd quite like to get that going. Now, what I do need to do is deliver a load of tomatoes to the shop. We need to get that done this morning. Um, and we have a lot of stuff down at the bakery that needs delivery as well. So we'll drop the tanker off the back here. And we'll head over here. And I've actually set this up so that it should automatically load the crates of tomatoes into our trailer uh now this to me is fine because it's just you know one stage difference between us uh, getting out in the tractor and doing it let's get out of here and close that so we should be okay with that as far as uh sort of a realism setup we're, we're basically taking them straight out of our greenhouse and loading them into the truck and so I'm now going to run this over to uh, the farm shop, uh, get these two and a half thousand, uh, two and a half, sorry, two 2,500 uh, litres of tomatoes sold. And uh, then, yeah, we're going to head down to the bakery and we're going to load this up with bread from there as well and get that sold too. I have had a thought that we've got a full pallet of eggs back at the farm as well. So what I might do is go and get them loaded up and take them down to the bakery. Because that's where we're taking our eggs at the moment to get them all set up for the cake baking that we've got to do in the next, uh, well, six episodes. I think we've got, yeah, six episodes left on this series. Will that open up? No, come on. Open the doors. There we go. Unload our tomatoes and make uh, 2,072. That's not bad at all. So pretty happy with that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to pop back up to the farm. We'll grab the uh, eggs that we've got sitting outside of our chicken coop. And then we can head 
uh, down to the bakery and uh, get that moving a little bit further as well. And of course, this will give us a chance to check on the status of everything down at the bakery as well. I'm uh, I'm not too concerned about how much flour we've got. Uh, I am a little bit more worried. Well, actually, no, I'm not. It's it, the things seem to be ticking along rather nicely. It's just if we can get the butter and the milk done over the next few videos that would be great so we're looking at getting what we have for oh no we need to round the back here uh for the butter uh that basically is going to be the first 4,000 liters of milk we're going to put that into our small dairy uh that we've got out of our container up at the top and uh, and get that processing through there uh, once that's processed through there, what we'll be able to do is get the uh, butter loaded up and delivered down to the bakery. At the same time, uh, by the time that's done, we should have another 4,000 litres of milk as well. Where did those eggs go? We've lost a... Uh, yeah, it's 99. We lost three eggs there. I don't know where they went. It's not quite a full pallet. But uh, that's okay. We'll deliver these down there. And the other thing I want to do while we're here is go and get some feed given to our chickens as well. It's a real sort of doing all the various bits around the farm we haven't touched for the last couple of months because we've been busy with the harvest. So it's sort of making sure this all goes according to plan. That is the remains of our chicken feed. So that's uh, 696 litres of chicken feed that's in there now. So that's all good. And we do start need to start preparing these fields for next year. We may not actually get them planted with a crop um, by the end of this series. But I do want to, at the very least, get them prepared, ready for a crop in the new year. There we go. So, with the eggs loaded up, let's close the door. And I think the door's closed. Yep, yeah, door's closed. Uh, let's head down to the bakery. And then we can go and sort the bread as well. And see what the situation is down there too. I'm feeling pretty fortunate with some of the mods that have been released recently. The new uh, dairy mod that uh, in the in the container came out at just the right time for it to be useful on our farm that should unload the eggs there we go so how are we so we've got 25,000 liters of flour 4,000 liters of eggs and 7,000 liters of strawberries by the looks of things and yes so it's two of everything so at the moment uh, we are able to make 4,000 litres of cakes um, once we get everything in here. Um, but that's pretty cool. So I'm going to back this up now uh, so that we can load in the bread and get that done. So let's get those loaded in and round the back so that we actually look like we're doing it. Right, there we go. And we'll back up to the next one so we have less distance to go. Round and get that one loaded up. Back it up to the next one. And do the same there. Squeeze past. Get that loaded up. Oh, wow. This is a good amount of breads uh, that we're loading into here. What? We're going to have a good uh, 5,000 litres. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, does it say? It doesn't say. Let's close those doors up. Uh, 4,000 litres of bread. That's really, really good. And as with the other stuff, we need to get this up to the farm shop and get that sold up there. So 4,000 litres of this should be worth quite a bit of cash, I think. Up and over... It's been a fairly good payday for us today. Uh, we haven't sold any of the canola oil yet. 
because that is due in December. I, I can't remember if I mentioned that earlier. 11,553 plus 1,169 on our environmental. That is huge. Um, so, yeah, we've uh, we've not sold any of the canola oil. That will probably be sold next month. Um, I think it's the only thing that we might need to do in December. Although, having said that, not strictly. We do need to also get our uh, milk to our cow, uh, from the, the cows into the uh, dairy uh, next month so we will we will probably do that then i think we're going to have about four thousand liters ready to go so we'll transfer that across um and that should work in our favor as well um not much else to do in december i don't think so we'll see where we are but we'll certainly have some of this transport work to do as well and, uh, and I think we're going to have uh, water to transport around too. Uh, this is the route that I take going across country to get back to the farm. It is the smoothest and quickest route, uh, really, that we have. So let's bring this down here. And you know what? I am looking at the state of my truck and very much going, we need to do something about this. So today, I am going to get the pressure washer. And uh, we will get this truck sorted. Where is the best? I think out in front of the house is probably the best place to put it. Because the water will run away from the house down into the bottom of the yard then. So uh, let's put it here. We'll back off a little bit. Quite good choices in the shop at the moment. This fent, I think if we were earlier in the series... Uh, this little vent favorite would be really useful to us. 115 horsepower. Yeah, it would be a great little uh, yard tractor for us to be buzzing about with. Uh, as it is, don't really want to spend the money at the moment. Uh, what we do want is under tools. I tend to go for this pressure washer. This pressure washer is a great little, uh, little one. Now... I can get it to about here, I think. Might cause an issue with the bales. There. Uh, there. That's where we'll put it. Perfect. And then we just spray down our truck. Give it a good wash. It hasn't had a wash the whole series because this is the first time we've washed anything on here. And look at that, that dirt is grounding. There we go, though. That is the truck nicely cleaned off. And just need to clean the rest of it off here. Give it a quick wash in there. Yeah, we, we can't go much further with this. But that is looking very shiny. There we go. Even if... Oh, wow. We could do with giving it a repaint. How many hours? We've only got four hours on this. And, uh, yeah, it looks like it's been in the wars a fair amount. But uh, we will park that up there. Oh, I've undone the wrap on one of those bales. Because it's so close to our, uh, to our bit there. So the next thing we want to do today is we want to get started on our fields. We bought this a little while ago. This is a cracking mulcher. There we go. And, uh, yeah, we want to get working on our field with this. The mulcher itself could do with a bit of a repair. The tractor's not too bad. And, uh, yeah, this New Holland tractor has been really, really useful on here. It's uh, It's been absolutely cracking and has done a very fine job for us. And this mulcher, we got this used at the end of last season and it should mulch us fairly well it's got a good width on it i mean look at the width on that and it's easily handled by this tractor so i'm not expecting it to take too long to get through our fields not worrying about using gps here because it should be fairly easy to see where we've been and down and i don't think we need to turn this on nope it's just a roller and is that mulching? I think that's mulching. That's actually harder than I thought it was going to be to see it. 
Let's check on the map and mulched. Yep, it is actually showing as mulched. So, yeah, it's working. It's just not the easiest thing to see. Oh, except we can see that the stalks are down. So, yeah, it is doing its job. And uh, we can see that it is as well. So that's good news. Our only problem with this tractor is whenever you put it into reverse, it immediately goes to minus one. And so is so slow to get to uh, reverse up and uh, manoeuvre anywhere. I'm quite happy with this piece of kit on here. It is working very nicely. I'm trying to keep myself lined up as best I can. And yeah, trying to keep on the zero angle we've got here. Of course, we've not got GPS as I mentioned earlier. And so it is much more by eye. But that's not a bad thing. Uh, you know, it was for, for a very long time, farming was done by eye like this. And I want to line myself up. I think we'll put it down the middle of these. Down with that. And I'm just going to back up a little bit further. There we go. And then we'll try and keep it in the middle here. And see if we can just keep a nice straight line. We've got... we. We've had a little bit of an overlap in the past, and that's kept things uh, nice and straight. But this is, yeah, this is easy enough. We can clearly see where we've been and uh, and 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 where we're going, and as a result, this is uh, going through here quite quickly. Uh, the day is getting on, but this is a nice wide piece of kit, so should be able to handle field twenty pretty well, I think. And yeah. That is just how simple it is. We are going across the field, getting this mulched, and getting it prepared for whatever crop that we could end up putting here in the future. Speaking of crops, something I think I'd like to see possibly in a mod of uh, some description is the ability to make both uh, soy milk and oat milk. Uh, they are things that exist. We got both those crops in game. I mean, we, we create soybeans and we, we create oats. And uh, yeah, it'd be great if the dairies were extended to inc include that. Whether they made a separate product called uh, oat milk and soya milk or whether they uh, lumped that in with milk, which of course I realized isn't really... Uh, it isn't really a dairy product and probably shouldn't be lumped in with milk like that. But uh, for simplicity of maybe not having to update the entire map to also take oat milk, uh, oat milk and soya milk um, would be uh, would be quite cool. Uh, you know, it would open up another avenue to use the dairy and uh, another way of uh, of using the crops from the farm, which I think would be uh, would would be quite nice to see and uh, and a, a very uh, logical way for it to go with the oats so uh, yeah I, I think I would like to see a mod that uh, included uh, both oat uh, milk and soya milk uh, included at some point and uh, I don't know if there was one if there is one let us know in the comments down below I am very intrigued to check out any mod that is doing that because uh well i wonder can you bake a cake with oat milk and soy milk that's a really good question i have absolutely no idea one thing we did forget to do on this field this year that we need to do is get the ph value up so we need to lime this field uh and there's no better time than over the winter to do that so uh, we can get in here in december providing we've got no snow on the ground that is i think that should be fine so uh, that will go along well with us selling the canola next month and doing our monthly uh sale of the perishables uh that should work out pretty well for that and yeah this field will be nice and clear by then we do have a spreader that will do lime so that's good news and we can move forwards from there uh, yeah, it's certainly affected our yield this year. Not by a huge amount. I think our yield was down by like 
5%. In fact, what did we have on here on yield? So, yeah, you can see at the top end here, we didn't get higher than 115%. And at the top end of the field, that is where we've got the loam. So we should have had 125% up there. And because we didn't lime it and uh, and hadn't got it ready, uh, that means that we, we dropped several percentage points uh, in our yield. So definitely room for improvement we are in a position where uh we we can actually we just forgot to do it last year and and it should have been more but uh we will get it done this year and it'll all be good and uh yeah that should be quite good for us i'm just thinking i'm sort of rambling off i oh, know 249 love to get that on the farm but that is a big beast uh we can't afford it. It's 250,000. And even if we manage to sell everything on here in the next couple of episodes, uh, we still wouldn't be able to add a combine to our farm. And we're, what, three years into this? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, quite a long road that we've been on uh, getting from there to here. And um, we... Uh, we still haven't got a combine to show for it. One thing I do love on this tractor is the turning circle. Because the wheels are set so much further forwards, they give a really, really good small turning circle on this tractor. And it works really, really well for maneuvering around the field and quite nicely offsets the problem that we have with the uh, the actual reverse gear that it throws it into um because we are able to turn in a much tighter area doing actual reversing is much less of a problem as it always seems to with field 20 this job is taking a little bit longer than i expected i think i did i get that bit there yeah i did get that bit there good and yeah we're we're past the halfway point but we're not quite as far as i would like to have been uh i've got sort of the distances and everything down we want to put the tip of the hood onto the fourth one over and that should cover all of the rows and then yeah straight across the field at well i think we can go up a gear no nope, not up two gears oh the gears on this tractor shift really quickly uh it's not a problem i really have on anything else but on this one yeah they shift massively quickly uh and you you tend to lose control of them very very swiftly um, but that seems to be a good amount now that we're a little bit further down the slope and uh, and everything's evened out a bit. We're getting about 20,000 revs on the tractor now. So, uh, yeah, normally that is a good place for us to place it. And you can see now, yeah, we've got ourselves into a good rhythm that should serve us pretty well for the end of uh, this field i'm not sure judging by how low the sun is uh, whether we're going to be able to actually get a uh or our second field field 17 done today it's not very big oh and we're missing stuff uh but it is uh it is one that could end up causing us issues uh if we don't well Basically, we'll have to pick it up next time and uh, and maybe get it done before next time. Uh, as there is a second day in November, but it's not a huge amount of work to do that, that doesn't really warrant a full video. As I mentioned before, the sun is getting a little bit low. It's just gone five o'clock. It's, uh, yeah, ten past five now. And... Uh, Oh, God, we're a little bit uneven in places. Uh, but we've got the lights on on the tractor, and we're now just sort of moving into the final stages of this field. Uh, it's going to be a case of getting this field finished off. 
and mulched and then heading over and getting field 17 done uh we should have both of these done before next time uh, and we'll be moving into december then uh be sorting out some butter for uh in the dairy so that we can get that done hopefully be able to turn 4,000 liters into that if we can let's pop into here and yeah butter 15 to 13 so we need a little bit more milk than we've got butter uh but that should that should work out fairly well for us um and interesting actually in there we've got raw milk i don't know if that mod adds raw milk to the cell points at all because if it does the thing that i was talking about earlier about having yeah there we go no cell points okay so we'd need to create a cell point for raw milk um but yeah so uh extra cell points we'd need for for things like oat milk and uh and soy milk if we were to add those in um but i digress because uh we are doing fairly well uh we should get this finished off tonight but it's getting a little bit dark so uh, i think what i'm gonna do is leave this here which means all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please leave a like drop us a comment and give it a share special thanks to all my patrons and channel members your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow for more from virtual farmer check out the links below follow on twitch to watch live and for more videos subscribe and ring that bell i will see you next time goodbye